there's a number of things that are on my mind as far as water is concerned, but one of the biggest ones that is coming up in the year 2012 is the 40th anniversary of the Clean Water Act. One of the first major, what I call modern environmental pieces of legislation, which has really changed the United States. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a great American success story that is celebrated around the world. And it took some, some rough stuff to get started. I can remember pictures of the Cuyahoga River burning in, in Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. And of course, Rachel Carson's Silent Spring were two of the, the, the springboards that got us into this Clean Water Act. You were a congressional staffer helping to rewrite the amendments. So let's talk about this for a little bit. When a law is passed, and this one was passed initially under the Clean Water Act in 1972, but it keeps evolving. Talk a little right. bit about how laws evolve. Right. The way a law is, is passed is that, that there is a groundswell of support. Uh, it may be a small group of citizens, it may be a powerful uh, stakeholder, it may be local governments, but the momentum grows. That then convinces either uh, an official in the executive branch or members of the Congress to get moving and to develop a law and it it is like the sausage making business it, it takes a lot of work and compromise when you're developing something that's meant to uh, speak to everyone in the nation you started actually as a congressional staffer and then you went to the EPA mm -hmm. to in where you were there for six years mm -hmm. and in charge of uh, all of the water aspects mm -hmm. of EPA now that must have been a, a daunting task water is so important to the future of this country and I just worry at times that we're we're not innovating and moving forward as quickly as we should um, and it's very easy to uh, get into fragmented siloed approaches where you're not uh, pursuing a more holistic integrated approach to protecting the entire watershed and connecting the, the dots and the drops between drinking water and wastewater challenges and reusing, recycling water. You need national principles and objectives that advance stewardship and conservation and recycling of water and, and protection of public health and ecosystems. But you need to be nimble enough and have the flexibility to recognize that this is a very big country and every watershed is different and every community is going to have some different needs and, and make some different choices and they need that flexibility. There's something like 2,500 different watersheds, definable watersheds within right. the United States. So just thinking about regulations that are nimble enough to cover all of those 2,500 watersheds but yet concrete enough to actually move the agenda of, of sustainability and uh, ecosystem protection and public health protection forward. It's very, very difficult. Yeah. And, and one of the things I've learned in my six years at EPA, and we were right in the middle of issues involving drinking water and wastewater, regulating uh, concentrated animal, you know, big feedlots and regulating sewer overflows. It's not all about regulation either. What you need to do is work to advance a spirit of stewardship and you don't have to be a government regulator to do that. In fact, there are many opportunities to instill a water awareness and sense of stewardship.